for joining with me today. Um, it is Friday, and on Fridays I have been doing some short reflections for you all, um, for myself really as well. And you know, it's a it's a really difficult time, isn't it? It's a difficult time that we live in. And you know, I've always been a bit of an adventurer. I like to get out and I like to explore. And so this season of being locked down or being closed is um is a tricky one for me. I've got a little bit of an echo here, so I'm just going to try and sort that out. Sorry. There we go. I think that's better. So this season of being closed down is a bit tricky for me, really. I get bored really quickly. Jo, my my uh, other half, she's not really like this. She'll sit beside the pool, relaxing all day. It won't be a bother to her. But me, during this time, I'll be itching, bouncing, starting to plot what we're going to do that day or the next. And, you know, scheming, really. And even more so in my younger days. But I want to be honest, sometimes the plans that I have made in these kind of adventure mode, they've often led to me lying awake at night. They've bothered me. I remember climbing or planning, actually, I remember climbing, planning to climb this Alp, uh, this mountain in the Alps with my cousin. We were out skiing, but we decided we were going to climb and rock climb and mountaineer to the top of this mountain one day. And I couldn't really sleep the night before. I was full of nervous energy and worry. I knew, I knew in, in truth, I knew it's a stupid thing to do. It was the middle of winter. People don't climb up mountains like that without the proper gear and the proper guides and the right training and all those things. We didn't have equipment. Maybe we even needed oxygen, I don't know. But that kind of adventure in me, and I want to be honest, and I only started to realise this recently, the ego and the pride that I follow meant that I went ahead. We had a near, couple of near-death experiences climbing up that mountain, and I really mean that. I remember about halfway up, we, um, we had, you know, honestly been through some crazy situations. I remember... Uh, my cousin's legs dangling as he hanged above a sort of 100 metre drop at one point as the snow fell away um, before us. I remember I've still got a little bit of a numb spot on my ankle where the flesh got so cold that I think I got frostbite. We came across a, a bunch of um, hikers that were tied together with snowshoes on who really rebuked us for being up there. Dan, my cousin with his, um, his DMs on. Me, fortunately I had a bit better walking boots than him so my feet were alright but, you know, it was dodgy. And I, I'll, I'll honestly, I'll admit, one of us cried when we couldn't make it to the top and we didn't know what we were going to do. And in the end, we got back down and we survived. But really, who was I following up that mountain? Yes, maybe a sense of exploration, of fun, of adventure, but also one of pride and ego too. And it's taken me many years to recognise that. This week, I've been trying to remember Luke 9, um, verses 23 to 24, where Jesus says, well, he, Jesus came to them and said, Whoever wants to be my disciple must deny themselves and take up their cross daily and follow me. For whoever wants to save their life will lose it, but whoever loses their life for me will save it. I used to think this was about denying pleasure, like, um, you know, being religious, actually. I used to think that a bit of denying myself is about you know, denying the fact that I've got, I want to lie in on Sunday morning and get up. Denying the fact that I want a really big TV and giving some of my money away instead. Those kind of things, you know, or keeping back those lustful thoughts that I've got or whatever, really. But as I've grown in my understanding, I've started to see that it's big. It's, it's in the light of control. Denying yourself is in the light of control. Giving over not your earthly desires, but actually giving over your whole life, your control. I mean, have you ever done that? Have you ever really done that because often what we do is we say thank you Jesus for rescuing me what we understand Jesus as is the one who's pulled us up out of the water when we were drowning but we've not often we've not given over our whole life to him and said okay now you are lord of my life I was unable to sleep the night before that climb because I thought I might lose control fundamental to our condition is the need to control the need to control what others think, the need to control what we eat, the need to control our own safety, the need to control our lives and preserve them over death itself. That's why we worry. That's why I was anxious the night before, because I wasn't following Jesus up the mountain. But Jesus is saying, whoever each and every day gives over control to me, gives over their self to me, their self-worth, their self-desires, all of it, their self-control over to me. They will lose their life. You've given it over. You've lost it. But surely you will find it. Joe's working on the COVID-19 ward this last couple of weeks. You know, uh, that means she's delivered a number of babies from COVID positive mothers. But we're so confident 
in the fact that we followed Jesus. We follow him and that she's there as part of working on, on his behalf that I can tell you the anxiety is not the same as when I was climbing up that mountain. Yes, of course, we feel nervous. Yes, of course, we have worrying thoughts. But there's a peace that lies underneath that and it passes understanding, but it passes on humanly understanding because we follow Jesus. If COVID-19 gets her, anyone in my household, well, we've given over control to Jesus anyway. Today, at least. I'm committed to trying to do it every single day. You know, you might be up worrying maybe about school, maybe about working in that shop today, tomorrow over the weekend, maybe about your mum in the care home, maybe about any number of things during this time. But Jesus is saying, can you give over those things to me? Can you put aside, like I needed to put aside my ego and my pride. Can you put aside your control, your need to control life itself? Can you pick up your cross, which sounds ridiculous, by the way, because to, to the listeners of the day, that would have been execute yourself every day kind of humiliating kind of devastating but you know this is what Jesus requires because his shoulders are so broad because he has been there before because I want to be Jesus's disciple he can take it and the Jesus this is the Jesus who even the wind and the waves obey this is the Jesus who fed 5,000 more than 5,000 people with two loaves and five fish or sorry five loaves and two fish this is the Jesus who I want to follow he is my king as such, I will not fear, not out of a sense of pride, not out of my ego or my sense of adventure, but because I know he's trustworthy and true. And I'll follow him into the mundane and I'll follow him into the exciting. I want to be his disciple. I want to deny my control. I'm going to execute it and I'm going to follow him. I trust, I trust his words that there I will find life and there I'll find life in its fullest. God bless you, God keep you, God be with you today and every day. And I look forward to the next time we get to spend just a moment together reflecting on our Lord, on our Saviour and our Lord Jesus.